Hey there! We watched dozens of those how I learned to code if I were starting over videos. Most creators give the same core advice. So in this video we'll break down that shared roadmap, step by step, from zero to your first dev job. In today's world, you simply can't talk about learning to code without talking about AI. None of the creators we watched believe AI will replace developers. I haven't met anyone who has yet been fired because of AI. But every recent How I Learned to Code video includes at least one tip about using AI. Not to cheat, but to learn smarter. As a tutor, as a feedback engine, as a way to personalize your learning roadmap. AI won't steal your job, but the developer who knows how to use it might. Because learning to code today isn't just about syntax or theory, it's about learning how to learn fast. Ignoring AI would be a serious mistake, especially if you were starting over. And since we're already talking mistakes, that's actually one of the most popular topics across all the videos we watched. We spotted the same ones over and over again. So here they are, the top three coding mistakes beginners keep making. The absolute number one mistake across how I learned to code videos. Tutorial help. Tutorial help. Tutorial help. Tutorial help. That's when you binge one tutorial after another without ever applying what you've learned. It feels like progress, but in reality, you're stuck in a loop. Watching, nodding, forgetting. You jump between courses, switch languages, restart playlists, and still can't build a single working app. Here is what creators kept saying instead. Take what you've learned and make something real. Over and over, they emphasized even the smallest, most broken project will teach you more than 10 playlists ever could. Because real progress starts when you stop consuming and start building. Your first app doesn't need to be impressive, it just needs to be yours. Mistake number two is thinking coding once a week will get you anywhere. Small daily practice beats rare marathon sessions. In the beginning, if you tell yourself you're only going to sit down and study code for five minutes, it won't be hard to get into that rhythm. And once you get into that rhythm, it'll be hard to stop. Mistake number three, giving up too soon. Frustration is part of learning and every experienced developer says this. Across dozens of videos, creators describe the same moment, stuck, confused, ready to quit. But here is what kept coming up. The most common point of failure isn't getting the answer wrong. It's stopping when it gets hard. That moment when nothing works, when you feel completely lost, that's not failure. That's a turning point. Push through it, even once, and you're no longer just learning to code. You're learning to think like a developer. Which brings us to the skill every creator highlighted, the mindset of a developer. Most How I Learn to Code videos don't start with code. They start with how to think like a developer. That means learning to break big problems into smaller steps, to look for patterns, to ask, is there a smarter, faster way to do this with code? This is what many creators call the developer mindset, a way of thinking that goes beyond syntax and tutorials. It's about approaching everyday tasks like an engineer, with logic, curiosity, and the habit of turning repetition into automation. Some creators say it's the most important skill you can build early on, because tools and languages change, but the way you think stays with you. Now, let's talk about first programming languages. Because across all these videos, one thing was clear. Your choice depends on what you want to build. Web apps, data analysis, automations, games, different goals need different tools. So, which language should you actually start with? Python. 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 Okay, but if we're talking seriously, here is a simple breakdown. Choose what you want to build. If you're focusing on front-end development, JavaScript and React is usually a safe bet. Kotlin Swift for mobile dev. If you're thinking more about machine learning, data science, automation, back-end programming, Python. If you want to build games or understand how things work behind the scenes, then you will probably want to explore C++, Java or C Sharp. And one more thing, don't fall into language hopping. Master one. Whatever it is, JetBrains has a tool to make your life easier. And if you're learning, good news. 
All JetBrains IDEs are free for students. Beginner coders often ignore this, but after watching over a hundred videos, one thing all experienced devs agree on is this. Don't wait to learn the tools. Real programmers know the environment. IDEs, Git, the terminal, it's not magic. It's what makes you faster, cleaner, and more confident. Now that you know what to learn, let's talk about how to actually practice it. Instead of thinking about learning code as like learn, 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 and then do, 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 it's more like learn, do, learn, do, learn, do, etc, etc, etc. Because theory without projects is just another Udemy course gathering dust. And once you start, don't just copy. Build small things. A calculator, a weather app, a to-do list, then take one of them and make it yours. Add a twist, a feature you actually need. That's how you turn practice code into something real and something you'll remember. Look, it doesn't need to be the next Facebook. Just build something real, anything real. In university, I had a trial of Spotify and when it ran out, I was too cheap to buy Spotify. So I created a Python program that uses the Spotify API to get those songs and then YouTube's API to download the MP3 version. Now I had all the same music, but for free. And it's one of the few employers loved asking about. Why? Well, one, because it's unique, but two, because I actually used it. See, your tiny passion project can become your ticket in, but only if people can actually see it. That's why so many creators recommend building in public from day one. Post your code on GitHub. It's like an online portfolio for developers when others can see what you're working on, how you write code, and how you improve over time. Write a tweet or LinkedIn post about what you learned. Recruiters and senior developers actually check GitHub profiles. And if I was hiring a junior developer and they posted about all the stuff that they were learning and I was able to see that progression, it would sell me a lot more on that individual than someone that had maybe the same skill and maybe the same set of projects that they built that didn't post about all that stuff. Yeah. No one's inspired by your hidden folders. Now that you've got projects to show, let's talk about how to actually land the job. Because tech companies don't just want to see what you've built. They want to know how you think when you're solving hard problems and how fast you can do it. Here is how it actually works. Most entry-level interviews include algorithmic challenges, like it or not. Not because you'll use this stuff daily, but because it's the easiest way for companies to filter candidates at scale. That's why some creators recommend starting with a solid course in data structures and algorithms. For example, trees, graphs, hash maps, recursion, sorting, searching. You don't need to master them all, but you do need the fundamentals. Then comes lit code, a huge library of real interview problems sorted by company and difficulty. Start with the easy ones and work your way up to mediums. You should start with easy questions and keep working on them until you can solve them in 45 minutes. Don't wait until you've solved 300 problems to start applying. Once you can solve medium lit code problems in under 45 minutes, start interviewing. The truth is, interview experience matters just as much as all the theory you're learning if you want to be able to solve anything that they throw at you. So I'd start interviewing as soon as possible. Schedule the companies you don't care about first. And yeah, your first few interviews might feel like you're being live streamed while Googling what is an array, but that's normal. Treat each one like a rep at the gym. Break down what went wrong, try again, and don't give up. Most creators who covered interviews said the same thing. It's hard, but totally worth it. Just keep coding. At the end of our research, there is one more thing we want to leave you with. A thought from the JetBrains team. The languages you start with will change. The tools, the frameworks, the buzzwords, all of that will keep evolving. But one thing stays the same. Your ability to learn, to stay curious, to actually enjoy the process. So don't chase forever tools. Chase what excites you because that's your real fuel on this path. And whatever path you choose, from your first Hello World to your first ship product, JetBrains has your back. Let's go!